Hey, welcome, welcome back. I'm also saying welcome back to myself because it's been so long. Thank you so much for your patience if you have been subscribed for a bit or even if you're a new subscriber. I am getting back on regularly creating and I'm very excited. I'm in a new space. I moved, I just went through a lot of life. So here we are. And today we have a pick a card for summertime. So I'm, oh, I'm excited. I feel like there's a lot that wants to come through. And whenever you watch this, this video is timeless. Um, meaning like you will gain something from watching this. You will receive something from watching this no matter when you watch it. However, it is intended for summertime of 2024. A lot of people, you know, with the springtime in North America have been setting intentions throughout the spring and planting seeds and then watching things start to bloom. And I feel like energetically so much has been clearing, purging, shifting, changing nonstop lately that it might kind of actually feel hard to really foresee like what's to come. So I feel like this pick a card will give a lot of guidance and support because there are a bunch of pre-pulled oracle cards and then I'll be using the tarot to dive into your energy. Um, this is a pick a card general reading. So go with whatever you want to go with at first. If you want to watch all of them, two of them, one of them, whatever. Just listen to your gut. If you want to take a second, you can actually just breathe a few times and ground in and open up your heart center. And maybe ask that energy to pull down into the sacral your gut and then breathing up and in and asking for an open crown space an open third eye space and maybe taking a few deep breaths here and aligning with yourself and i'll give you some crystals to pick from and we'll just go ahead and dive in and i'm going to actually keep track of my timestamps this time and make my life a lot easier All right, so we're going to go ahead and show you guys the indicators. So for pile number one, we have this really beautiful lemon magnesite sphere. And in real life, it's got this like gorgeous, funky neon yellow color, but it's kind of hard to see. So this is for pile one. And we'll get into the meaning of all the stones and stuff once we start reading the piles. Pile two has a labradorite ganache. And pile three has this rutilated quartz tower that's filled with silver rutile. This is a really wild piece. <laughs> We're already getting a lot from all these piles, but anyway, so go ahead and take a moment, align with yourself, ask for what your highest self needs to receive um, and just go with whichever one feels best for you right off the bat. So we'll start with pile number one. How fitting. Three minutes and 30 seconds, I see you. All right, let me scoot these out of the way for a moment. So pile one, you guys picked the lemon magnesite. This stone is one of the most calming stones. It's very grounding, uh, but it, all, it mostly just feels like heart calming, energy field calming, nervous system calming. And for it to be in a sphere, it means it's radiating out in all directions. So this has been an incredibly powerful tool for me personally. Um, you know, and like a friend <laughs> to be with and spend time with. So you may already be feeling really calm, really centered, or maybe you're needing more of that right now. Maybe you're needing to work with this stone. So this could be a good indicator of what the summer season is preparing you for, what you might be experiencing. Um, you might be experiencing a lot of peace and a lot of calm, or you might have a lot going on, which we'll get into in the cards, and you'll just need something to support your energy field and your nervous system. And Oz might drop in and help. 
So our first, or we're gonna pull an oracle card, wow. We're gonna pull an oracle card, and then we'll dive into the tarot, and then we'll pull the supporting oracle cards. But the first one is independence. Oh my god. The first new moon, ooh. The first new moon of the summer could be really important for you for intention setting. And the eclipse season could have had something to do with like you gaining more of a sense of independence. So whatever has happened since the eclipse season started, um, the theme or the main thing that you might be realizing or experiencing is how independent you can be, how strong and sovereign you can be. And I'm sensing a lot of like purity and reconnection with self, which is really beautiful. But we'll go ahead and read... Shooting skyward like a meteor, this air dragon has burst forth from the heavens of the storm that was holding him down. I'm sorry, from the heaviness of the storm that was holding him down. The moon and stars are his companions now. He is free once again to experience the joy of life and is here to remind you to do the same. It's time to break free of whatever is holding you back, strike out on your own, and be your own being free from bondage. You will still need help, but that's part of the reason this dragon is here. It's time, ooh, it is your time to soar through the air with the freedom of the sky and wind around you. Break free and experience all that life has to offer. Hey, Oz. Hey, what are you doing? He's being very nudgy today. He like wants to go outside so bad, but it is wicked windy. I'm like, you're just, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> but anyway, this feels really strong, so you know, if you've gone through something that has really pushed you to understand and crave your freedom more, um, or you could be just experiencing that more in this upcoming summertime, but I have a strong feeling that the eclipse season started that for you and that you're leaning into that more this summer. Like whatever storminess, whatever, like lots of thoughts have been popping up, like whatever it is, it's just it's time for you to calm and center amongst all of the stuff that's been going on and for you to be more in alignment with yourself. I'm feeling a very strong, like magnetic, personal boundary type energy. There is a lot of freedom that comes from that and there's a lot of strength and stability within the self that feels like it's coming up. And I also, for those of you who are really drawn to working with crystals, this Lemurian point wanted to be here very badly. So there's a lot of information, there's a lot of downloads, there's a lot of connection that's wanting to happen through, at the bare minimum, through this video. Um, but just in general, if you're feeling called to work more with crystals, find Lemurian quartz. All right, so for pile number one, with this independence, what else is coming their way this summer? What can they be aware of? What are they working on? What is presenting itself to Pile 1 in this season? How can they prepare themselves? What can they be made aware of? What needs to be shared for their highest good? We have the sun right off the bat. Leo season, Leo energy. We have the tower. Five of Swords, Queen of Cups. Hmm. There's a very, I don't know if you can hear, I'm a very angry man wandering around outside. Three of Wands. This feels good. This feels very good. There's a lot of energy around, like you've been, um, oh wow. You guys have felt very trapped in the heart space. You felt very confused, concerned. Um, there has been an inability to be very clear within yourself and your mental space. And I feel like it's because a lot of your joy and genuine personal happiness 
has kind of taken a back seat for a while and then something's something has changed i feel like something really changed during eclipse season you went through a massive breakthrough maybe you like had a breakup maybe you moved maybe you switched jobs maybe you know whatever was a really big foundational shift for you um you know for me i went through a breakup and then that caused me to need to find a new home and then i moved and then i started new work so it was kind of everything <laughs> um and by going through whatever shifts started to occur a couple months ago, you've become more connected with your joy and your clarity and your emotional health and well-being and you're prioritizing that. I also feel like the summertime is going to be an amplification of your abundance, of your joy, of the new foundations that you've been building since these massive changes have happened. And it's about like letting go more. If there's anything you're unsure about or unclear about, Spirit's just asking you to let go and trust more. Be in your joy more. And like go out and adventure more. Like there's this, there's definitely a feeling of new, new heights, new possibilities, new timelines for the summer. Um, I mean, big, big energy. We have, we have three of swords reversed. So there's this feeling of like, I'm not interested in, in there's no more pain, no more pain. I don't need pain anymore. Um, pain is a, a, a way for you to learn. And I feel like you're coming to a space of understanding that you don't need that lesson anymore. So whatever it is that shifted a while ago, I feel like you're fully releasing and cleansing yourself from that experience or maybe the pain that was brought on by that experience. Now, why is the Two of Cups reversed? Over the summertime, it feels like this is, it's your opportunity to notice um, specifically with like partnership or union energy or even relating to yourself, you know, take it however it resonates for you, but it feels like there's a lot of mental stuff that just is you know it's not serving you moving forward and being in your joy um there's a need to like let go of attachment bottom of the deck is king of wands there's a massive rebirth happening leo season is important leo energy is important the lion has come up quite a few times leo rules the sun in the tarot there's two lions up here there's a lion here um you know, that personal willpower and strength and like belief in self, the self belief feels really strong and the ability to create from nothing, the ability to choose and dictate where you're putting your energy and how things are manifesting and showing up in your life is a and five of pentacles, the Yeah, any sort of feelings around like being abandoned, being alone is getting alchemized into the magnetism that you're going to begin to like put out because of how much. Oof, geez, pile one. Because of this new level of independence. Thank you. There's a lot of, I'm feeling and seeing like golden energy pouring in. There's a lot of healing happening during this time for you. There's a lot of, a lot of magic, a lot of connection. And I'm going to take my socks off, so don't mind me. <laughs> Just like, I don't feel like wearing socks. Why am I wearing socks? Um, a lot of magic, a lot of foundational, like new foundational wealth and growth which is coming from your joy and your emotional fulfillment and i'm feeling because you got the queen of cups this feels very like self nurturing and self um fulfilling so that's what i have for you pile number one i'm going to go ahead and flip the rest of the oracle cards and see what else can support you with all of this energy we got find your sacred flow. The 12th 
could be important. So of, of any of the, you know, June, July, August, whatever. The 12 could be important. One and two is new beginnings, balance and harmony. One and two is three, three is co-creation. And then finding your sacred flow. This has to do with the connection to the sacral chakra. So that has a lot to do with the Queen of Cups energy. Let's read about that. Find your sacred flow. Essential meanings, finding your flow state, your unique rhythm, bringing your spirituality into the solution. Inflow with the universe, pausing, surrendering control, taking time to understand other perspectives and your own. Self-care message, a habit of copying someone else's steps, overscheduling your time, being a martyr, putting others' needs in front of your own, a need for self-care and a sacred pause. Your sacred flow. Each one of those words is powerful medicine for your creator spirit. Tune into your own rhythm and actively schedule your own unique sacred flow into your life every day. This may mean stopping to nap, exercise, or meditate during the day if that's what makes your heart sing. It may mean scheduling something sacred into your planner, something epic even. What makes you feel alive and in flow with the world? Are you leaving time for that thing? For me, it's like it's traveling. It's allowing myself to just go and do things. And so this, the Three of Wands energy resonates really strongly for me. It's like, okay, like let's just see where we can go next, you know? If something is encroaching on your flow time, you may need to set clear boundaries and prioritize the sacred break. Be sure you aren't giving up your personal space so that someone else can benefit. Don't be a martyr. This space is desperately needed for you to find your center. If you are feeling pressure to make an important decision right now is not the time to give an answer you aren't completely sure of. Go with the flow of not knowing. Sleep on it. Surrender to not having all of the answers and know that everything will be revealed when you gift yourself the space of distance, stillness, and perspective. When have you lost yourself in doing instead of thinking? What activity has made you get into that flowing state of Zen and just being? How do you get into that sacred zone, that place where time stands still and everything else fades away? If you were to flip your opinion on its head, what perspective would you be gifted? That feels important. Okay, next card. Spirit, guardian, protector, defender, service. And this is the number nine. You guys could have any one of these animals as a spirit guide or be seeing these animals a lot lately. Number nine. Nine is closure and endings. Nine's an amazing number. I am the pulse of greater understanding, a guide that serves all creation, the guardian of protection itself. As I breathe and know of my connection through the animals, sky, sea, and wind, I stand in reverence for all that lives. You are protected. And also here to protect. You are loved and also here to love. So find your center and live with intention. I'm calling you forth into a higher dimension of service. Oh, I have chills and I feel emotional. Spirit guardian is the masculine and his sacred role is protector and defender of life and all of its diversity. He feels and understands that all beings are part of a sacred whole and knows that we are all designed to be in harmony and symbiosis with one another from the largest to the smallest, humans, animals, plants, and natural elements. From the awareness of this connection, he has a deep respect and a powerful desire to protect. In this, in this cause, he embodies fierceness and courage, along with an empathetic and loving heart. This is spirit guardian medicine. In Native American tradition, the totem animal is the spiritual archetype of the various animal species, each with its own unique and particular medicine. In their role as spiritual protectors and guides between the natural and spirit worlds, totem animals have attributes and wisdom that help us to live and maintain the sacred balance of our world. In this tradition, each person, each person is connected with nine different animals that will accompany him or her through life, acting as guides and helpers. In this painting, the spirit guardian is surrounded by his totem animals, wolf, deer, mountain lion, bear, owl, raven, snake, fox, and a possum. Spirit Guardian's message is to recognize your important place in connection with all of life. When you truly feel your connection with the natural world, it awakens a sincere desire to protect it. 
now not only are you being blessed and supported by this connection, but you yourself are a blessing to all of life. By being in this awareness, you naturally offer your service with your thoughts, words, and actions to others. This cycle of gratitude and service activates a higher vibration in you and with all you come in contact with. And as you move through your day, you are guided to places and situations where your unique help is needed. All of life benefits from your presence and you are making a difference in the world more than you know. And I just looked down and saw 2020. So 2020 might have been an important year for you and two and two and zero and zero is, is unity, is connection, is, is balance, is harmony, is um, void space, new beginnings, new connections. So something about a really divine soul connection coming through too. Um, but I will say it feels like you are getting pushed into being in a space where you can hone in more deeply on your craft, yourself, your flow, your being, and do more things that bring you joy and light you up so that you can be in more service. You genuinely, it feels like you're being called to this state of independence and protecting that independence because you're meant to show up a little bit, not a little bit, more aligned and more yourself for yourself and for like everyone else, whether you are just like, look, if you're just a normal person and you're like, I love watching tarot readings and you just go work your nine to five or you take care of your family or you like, you're like, look, I just, I'm just chilling. I work at a bank and I love my life. Fucking awesome. This totally applies to you. You being fully and authentically yourself serves you and the rest of the planet no matter what you're doing. And I will also offer that like, if you know that you're meant to be doing bigger, greater things, this is, this is why you're getting pushed to enjoy yourself more and to do more things for yourself. Just saying. And the last Oracle card is Hummingbird Miracles. You are a joy bringer. You bless the world with positivity and love. Energy soars on your shining wings. Spread the miracle of happiness. So how else can you spread the miracle of happiness if you're not happy? <laughs> yeah, you bring so much joy to this world. And miracles like follow you easily. I feel like the hummingbird's potentially a really strong um, messenger or support animal or guide for you. Yeah. And like birds could be really important for you lately too. I mean, same, <laughs> but I, I just, I love this. I love this for all of y'all so much. I feel like this is incredibly powerful and an important reminder to do what's best for you, um, protect your energy, protect your peace, lean into this independence, and how good that feels, and see what kind of dreams and adventure it takes you on. I feel, I do genuinely feel like this energetic of that lemon magnesite, the calming energy, is like the energy you're going to have and feel as you dive deeper and further into yourself and your purpose and what you're bringing to the world. So uh, with all that being said, pile one, that's it for you. And if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one individual reading, the link is in the description below. Uh, I also do like mini pre-recorded readings which, you know, might make your life a little bit easier because it's like, it's shorter, it's a little less expensive, and um, it just gives you the opportunity to not have to make it to like an appointment, right? Like you can watch it whenever you want, as many times as you want, all that fun stuff. So I'm here to support you. I love providing these things for you guys, and if you feel like this was supportive for you, helpful for you, please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all the other videos that I'm going to make because I'm getting out of my comfort zone and moving past the resistance of putting videos out on YouTube. I don't know why. I don't. Whatever. It's okay. It doesn't really matter why. But anyway, um, I appreciate you all so much. I'm sending you love. 
And we're gonna go ahead and move on to pile number two. Okay, energy shift. So pile two, you guys picked the Labradorite Ganache. Labradorite is the stone, um, it's basically like a stone that helps support through change or growth or transformation. And Ganache is the remover of obstacles. It's like the simplest way to put it. So this is a pretty powerful piece in my personal opinion. That's why it sits right at the front of my desk. So I want to see how that kind of les resonates and lands throughout the rest of your reading. Wow. You got meditation. Mm. <laughs> I'm feeling like some of y'all need to meditate. I literally opened up to the meditation page. I feel like some of y'all need to meditate with Ganesh or go on a journey and, and meet Ganesh. Learn about it. Or just meditate with a uh, Labradorite. Quiet and peaceful, she rests the body while the mind goes silent, with the earth and the moon her only companions. Soft and relaxing energies swirl around her as she opens her mind and lets go of all thoughts. Meditation is active rest. Still the body, let your mind go quiet and become the observer. Do not try to push away your thoughts, observe them without judgment or comment. Breathe and let that breath take you away. Take a moment, even just five minutes, be still and let the mind rest. Just like your body, it too needs a break. Stop running, be still, and just breathe. Y'all might be going through a lot of changes and growth and shifts this summer. And this meditating might be um, a really important practice for you in order to clear the mind space more. We're just going to start pulling tarot cards because I feel a lot of energy, interesting energy here and I'm, I'm wanting to just let that flow out. Let that flow out for you guys. So what messages does pile number two need to hear? Um, the number two could be significant for you as well. What energy is present for pile two for the summer season? What intentions are being set? What can they be mindful of? What are they working with? Change. I just keep hearing change. Change and growth. It's really big growth. The five of Pentacles. <clears throat> Queen of Cups. You might have felt drawn to pile one as well. So I would encourage you to go back and watch that if you haven't already. Change and growth. Um, meditating on your finances is something that I feel like will be helpful for you this month as well. Whether that's understanding your finances better or, you know, manifesting. Maybe working with that new moon energy in the beginning of summer and, um, just working with abundance energy. We have Knight of Cups. We have nine of swords. This is, it is, it's a lot of interesting, dynamic, very fluid energy. I would not be surprised if y'all um, have Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces in your top three zodiac signs. Um, it's a lot of fluctuating energy. We have pentacles, we have cups, we have swords. Meditation. It's like if there's any blocks that you feel like you have or that you're facing, meditate on it. And like sit with that block specifically, you know, like ask, like, why do I not, why am I not with my partner or my soulmate? Um, why am I not making as much money as I want to be making, right? Like if you have questions, bring it to the meditation space, bring it there and sit with it and then just let it unravel and let it go. 
and see like, you know, it depends on who you are and where you're at in your journey. But sometimes when we meditate, we just need to fucking let stuff go. Sometimes we need to observe it more deeply and understand where it's coming from or what it's connected to, right? So these are all important things to consider. And what I'm getting from all of these cards We're going to pull a few more because pile two, okay. It's like you need to have a firmer belief in yourself. Like there's a want to take all sorts of action, however... You're not super clear on where you want to go. And you're kind of, it's almost like, are you holding on too tight to your opportunities and resources and you're not allowing yourself to like heal more? You're not allowing the feminine energy to, to nourish you more? And when it comes to love, because there's someone or something that's wanting to like present itself to you and make an offering to you. You're going to feel like you get it. You're going to feel like clear, like, oh, okay, yes, this is the, this is how I want to feel. This is the direction I want to go. This is what I want to work towards. And then some part, there's like a massive aspect of overthinking, but you're realizing that the overthinking is a block, right? So how do we work with the energies that are wanting to help you unblock this situation? Because it's like something new, some new offering is coming in for you that's going to feel really good and fulfilling, um, but you're, there's like fear or discouragement or things internally that are stopping you from being open and receptive and like being able to nurture and mother yourself And also, like, get the support you need, you know? Like, spend time with the people that you want to spend time with. Um, reconnect with your friends over this, over the summertime. Yeah, and Ten of Wands. And Six of Swords. Pile 2, it's like summertime is potentially going to feel like a lot for you. I, I feel like you're going to be feeling a lot. Um, there, you might not be able to tell like right from left or up from down. The thing is though, is that it's all internal and the more that you can release and let go and trust and give it all up, like clarify and then give it up and gain the clarity that you can gain around it or at the very least, like give yourself a break and let it go as much as you can or ask like for the obstacles that are in your way like how do i you know how do i work through this how do i steadily like get to the point i want to get to like why is this obstacle here is this obstacle actually showing up as an offering to give me an opportunity to walk away from something or drop something that i don't need to carry anymore you know um there's a there's a deep need for an internal shift for you guys this summer so we're going to go ahead and read into the rest of the Oracle cards that I pulled to see how you can be supported in this process um, and just have like messages or signs, things like that. You got number 22. Lots of two energy, lots of harmony, lots of unity, lots of balance, lots of um, lovers, divine connection. Um, hmm. Some of you could be manifesting like your soulmate or your partner and wanting that to come through. But number 22, raw intention. This feels very connected to the root chakra. I almost feel like the root, whatever's going on in your root is what's affecting your ability to be fully open and magnetic. So something to think about. 
All right, intention brought to life, wild power, savage love, divine intervention, powerful inspiration, channeling messages from source. Self-care message. Holding on to the details too tightly, not allowing source to intervene, missed opportunities, getting stuck in your story, unchecked emotion that is sabotaging your efforts. Mm -hmm. Intention can be raw or it can be refined. Refined intention gets polished and perfected and turned into marketing, a resume, a vision board. And it is always tinted by layers of our own perception. Raw intention is wilder than that. It's pure, unrefined, and authentic. It's the mother who lifts a car with her bare hands to save her child because raw power does not ask questions. It just does. And so it is. By virtue of simply being human, you have this wild and natural magic inside you. And you may have been spending too much time filtering your raw power as a way to fit in or as a way to be who others want you to be. Unleash your pure intention and you will radiate so much innate magic that you'll move mountains. Allow spontaneity and divine love to guide you and pay attention to whim, desire, inclination, and impulse. If you notice any unwanted emotions surfacing like anger, sadness, fear, or guilt, simply be with them. Hear them. Notice them. Ask them why they are present and they will likely point to a much deeper need that sounds something like, I am seen, I am loved, I am accepted, I am safe. Remind yourself that you are all of these things and draw your power from there. What are your wild and unkempt intentions calling into your life? What needs to be heard? And can you work with them mindfully to build the life of your dreams? One way of channeling raw intentions is to do a little automatic writing. Ask your question to the universe and sit with an open mind, a blank page, and a curious heart. Allow messages from the unconscious mind to flow onto your page. Just write or doodle and shift. I love that for you guys. There's There feels like a cancer energy present, so it might be important for you to get into some kind of like fiery energy and, and willpower and shifting. Oh. You got another angel number. You got 22 and 44. Birth, creation, manifestation, beginning. Oh my God. Oops, wrong book. Oops, the last one in the book. I am the carrier of ancient wisdom, a vessel of sacred offerings. Through my creative power, I express myself fully Honoring that which wants to birth, from my soul it comes outpouring. What am I here to embody? Only that which wants to come through me. I will protect and nurture it, honoring spirit's timing. Message. We're living in the era of the birth of a new paradigm, of the awakened divine feminine and sacred masculine. All of the elements have come together at this place and time for the birth of the divine feminine and sacred masculine within you too. You're being reborn into your soul's magnificence and mastery, here to serve the divine vision that wants to shine through you. This is the time of rebirth into your complete expression of your full potential and no less. This new beginning represents the fulfillment of many of the hopes, dreams, and desires from ancestry, and also the healing from the wounds of these previous generations. Hold deep and reverent space for this innocent and vulnerable being. It needs to know she or he is wanted here and is safe here. Attend to this divine child with the powerful gentleness and fierce protection of a loving parent. Welcome to the world. You are the answer to your prayers. I just feel like that one kind of speaks for itself, so I don't need to go any deeper into it. And then you got white stag protector. You're an old soul. Your best friend is nature. Use your intuition to take you where you want to go. Awaken to the powerful force within you. You are meant to create blessings with your magic. Yeah, pile two, there's some massive rebirth energy moving through here for you. And I feel like whatever frustration or changes are going to be happening is just a call for you to like create more flow within your creative self. You know what I mean? It's like, let the raw intention be out there. Let yourself birth something, you know. And the meditation and the Ganesh, it's just like, it's a lot of 
spirit wanting to kind of just clear out the old stuff and like move through you. I, I really feel that very strongly. So, um, big wow. <laughs> big wow. I love that for all of y'all. And if you want a more personalized and um, specific, like one-on-one -on -one reading to kind of dive into this, there's a booking link below. And I can also do like mini pre-recorded readings. So those are always an option. Um, but yeah, you guys have a lot coming up for you this summer. So Take your time to set the intention. You know that like any any obstacles be shown to you or gently shifted out of your way. Um, you know, ask how you're meant to work with them. Ask why it's important right now. All that fun stuff. So I'm sending you guys so much love. And that's all I have for you, pile two. And we're going to go ahead and jump into pile number three. Oops. All right, pile three. So you guys picked, all right, when I was first pulling all of the oracle cards and shuffling, your guys' cards just exploded everywhere. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? So like, <laughs> um, there's a lot of all over the place energy. And what I find fascinating about this Rutile Tower is even though it feels like a lot, you know, like it's just tons of silver going in all sorts of different directions. And I think there might be, is it all silver? I think it's literally quartz with a ton of silver rutile. It's just gnarly. Um, this is a gnarly piece. It feels very storm and wind element. It also feels very directed and focused. Like it's, it's helping all of this clarity or information to like actually go somewhere where it's, it's needed. So you might feel a little windswept this summer. It might be a little all over the place and it's about gathering yourself and your thoughts. Wow, I have full body chills. Pile three, you got emergence. Oh my God. Full body chills, arms, legs, head, everything, fuck. What does this dragon friend have to say for you? I was kind of like, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of rolling my eyes at this pile when I <laughs> when I was pulling the cards. I was like, why are y'all a hot mess? But I guess maybe we'll get to that, but this feels very profound. This great red watcher sits atop a stone gateway through which a shimmering sunrise is just about to peek over the horizon. She is here to tell you that you are ready. You are ready to move forward into a new beginning, a new life, or a new endeavor. You have done the work to leave your past self behind and proven your worth to her. You are ready to emerge as the next incarnation of yourself. All you have to do is step through the gate and embrace the fresh adventure before you. She can't promise that it won't be without hard work and difficulties, but it will be a journey worth taking. <laughs> I have tingles everywhere, just full body chills. Okay, I'm going to get into your tarot pile three because, oh my god, the energy of each of these piles was so vastly different. So I'm excited to see what pile three needs to know, what is supportive for their highest good, what messages, what clarity are they needing right now, um, what are they moving through the summer, what needs to be brought to their attention or awareness. Of swords, you might have been drawn to pile two, so maybe that's worth looking into as well. Seven of Pentacles. Four of Swords. I got a lot of Gemini energy when I was shuffling, so you might be a Gemini Sun, Moon, or Rising. You might have a lot of Gemini in your chart. Two of Pentacles. Knight of Cups reversed. Okay. Emergence. New beginning. What I think is very interesting 
pile three is this feeling. So I feel like the emergence kind of like automatically denotes or dictates this like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to be like in my zone and doing my thing and it's going to be amazing. And that's not untrue. However, what I'm getting is this need to be mindful of like, what's actually like, you're still, we're still in process. We're not totally picking all of the fruit yet. There might be some things that are ready, um, but you're still, you're still kind of watching over the crop. And with the four of swords coming out right in the middle of the pole, it's like, you still need to rest more. It's like, and we're creating balance. And we're going to get to this part in a second, but the emergence is like the fresh start, the new mindset, the new beginning, the clarity, right? And the understanding that like, okay, some of this is still going to take time. So like not everything is totally fresh, but a new side of you, a new timeline, a new version of you is ready to take on what you've been building towards um and what you've been working on and like one of the biggest things that you're going to need to do is take more time for yourself and don't overthink stuff with four of swords and two of pentacles it's like balance work and play you know don't overdo it and this knight of cups being reversed i would like to know more about please what's up with that <sighs> instead of allowing yourself to get caught up on all the possibilities of something specifically with regards to like an emotional thing or relate relating whether that's friends family relationships whatever um instead of being like oh okay but there's like all these possibilities there's all these options focus on calling in and inviting in the things that actually make you happy and joyful, the things that actually feel really good and abundant and nourishing. Um, because I feel like the right thing cannot show itself or offer itself to you because you're so concerned with all of the possibilities. It's like, nah, bitch, just focus on what you actually want and what's actually going to make you happy. And then something's just going to come charging in. <laughs> which I appreciate. Um, anything else with this emergence energy? The need for balance, trusting that this new version of yourself is coming in to kind of tackle what you've been working on and building, okay? So like not a whole bunch is gonna be different other than like the version of yourself that's showing up. So you're gonna be able to show up differently and and you need to take your time in integrating um, and changing. And then we have Knight of Pentacles. You have a lot of Knight energy, Page of Cups. You're not entertaining like the stupid, silly offers anymore. You're not entertaining like the like the dude next door who like might be kind of nice. It's like, no, we're looking for solid possibilities and opportunities. We're looking for things that feel like they have substance and that are going to last long term. So whatever, whatever that means for you, if that's again, relationship based, if that's job based, if that's like hob, whatever, like, I hope you know at this point how to apply things to yourself. Um, oh no, two, three, ah! Three of my little bulb things are out of my ring light. But anyway, um, yeah, that's really important for y'all. That's really important. Don't entertain bullshit is what I'll, what I'll leave that at. All right, so we're going to oh my God. direct your attention and focus to where you want it to go. Because this sums up the beginning of me pulling all your cards so well, the distraction of shiny things. Number 15, so the 15th of the upcoming months could be important to you. One in five is new beginnings um, and change and growth and maybe challenges. And then one in five together is six, so it's reciprocity. It is focus, it is clarity, it is balance, it is love. But let's go ahead and read it anyway. Taking stock and leveraging your strengths. 
polishing and buffing your image, the strength of discernment, knowing exactly what is right for you and what is not right for you at this time. What did we say? Focus on what feels good. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Self-care message. Illusion, delusion, being distracted by another person's shiny things, comparing yourself to others, veering from your course, coveting another person's success, imposter syndrome, being continuously tempted to jump into the next hot thing. You've got a big purpose, a mission, a whole big beautiful life to create. Stay the course, silly magpie. Don't get distracted by the allure of the many glittery options you see. most of which aren't what you truly desire. Sometimes the path towards your desires will sway, but the overall north should remain stable, else you'll find yourself flying in circles. If you've been doing a whole lot of pivoting lately, it's time to look at the underlying reason why. Do you have a flight plan? Or are you gliding around aimlessly unsure of where to go next? Use your, long, your longing as a barometer of what's possible for your life, avoiding the temptation to emulate other people's shiny lives. While it's perfectly fantastic and strategic to do a little competitive analysis, do it from a place of confident curiosity and not from a place of unhealthy comparison. Focus on finding your own powerful glow instead, for nothing in the world is more magical. How do you avoid the temptation of shiny, meaningless things? What's your weakness and how can you... It says, how can you avoid your weakness? I don't like that. I would offer... When it says, how do you avoid the temptation of shiny, meaningless things? Let's rephrase that. Why is everyone's brakes screeching today? That's very annoying. Um, if it's confirmation, that's fine, but I'm annoyed. <laughs> um, how do you acknowledge your temptation? What is your weakness and how can you bring it to the forefront and work with it? I don't avoid. I really don't like that. Don't avoid anything. Um, that is your shortcut to success and to being the best version of yourself is when you don't avoid shit. Face every single thing that pops up and acknowledge it and work with it to the best of your abilities if it's the time for it, right? So I totally get like, let's just say, you know, with, um, I'm going to use like food and eating as, um, as like an opportunity to explain this better. But for me personally, I have a mega fucking sweet tooth. I have a mega sweet tooth. It is why the only sweet thing I let myself keep in my house is dark chocolate or cacao. Because I will like, if, if there are fucking cookies and cupcakes in front of me, I'm going to eat them. I love sweets. Um, so, and that's like not good for anybody, <laughs> realistically. So, when it talks about like what's your temptation of the shiny thing of the momentary feel good you know where does that temptation come from and i know i know what it is for me um i know what it is for me and i'm not going to sit here and explain all my shit to you guys when it says what is that weakness and how you know how can you work with it that's something that I really, it's, it pushes me to regularly check in with my body and ask myself, why do I want this right now? And sometimes the answer is like, because I just really want some chocolate and I want to enjoy some chocolate. Great. Um, if it's like, ugh, I'm just feeling like not great and I just want to like feel better for a second and I just want to put something in my mouth because like, um, you know, addictive tendencies will have fixations, right? So it's like, oh, I just feel like I need to be filling or like, um, doing right like chewing or experience I feel like I it's like okay am I trying to avoid like being still and present with how I'm actually feeling right now you know so all of that your particular brand of shiny what makes you unique what's your wild what's your quirky what's your divine light how do you communicate when you are in your own zone and how can you learn to fly in this life always I love that shift. I really love that shift for you. And it might be kind of new seeing as how this new version of you is really popping out and you're building from the ground up, you know, like all this red is a lot of root chakra energy. Seven of Pentacles is like we're still in process, you know, so that's really, it's really powerful. Okay. Ooh. Elephant spirit, number 19, one and nine. Again, new beginnings. 19th of a month could be important for you. Nine is, is closure and endings. One and nine is 10. That's big time death and rebirth. 
Elephant spirit, empathy, altruism, and community. Mm -hmm. I am powerful, wise, and caring. I remember who I am. Elephant Spirit's message is for you to embrace a more powerful and prominent leadership role in all areas of your life. This includes personal, person, my words have been so fucked today, personal relationships, career, and community. Elephant Spirit medicine means leaning with, leading with the wisdom of your heart. If you're feeling stuck or blocked in any area of your life, follow the heart of elephant spirit. This heart has its own wisdom and power deeper and farther reaching than the logical mind. And it will always show the right way and help clear a path through it as well. Elephant spirit will also reveal to you the many ways you can help others, both humans and animals along the way. Elephant spirit remembers who you are, an immensely wise, powerful, and caring being here to love others and also be loved. What I think is important about that energy shift was like going from the messiness and the chaos of the beginning when I was first pulling your cards to the slowing down and the centering and the focusing, right? So notice that energetic shift from the beginning of your reading right to that point where it all just kind of, it was like a, and all these things. And then it just brought you into this really powerful place. So just take note of that. And your last card, community, you got community twice. So maybe you're building community. Maybe you're very focused on community during the summertime. Take it as it resonates. B, community. You are a powerful creator. Your work blesses everything you touch. Be open to receiving sweetness. You are the queen of abundance. I really love that. And sunflowers can be important for you too, I'm feeling. So... Yeah, pile three, that's a powerful, powerful energetic for the summertime. So just claim that for yourself. Please comment below um, how, if and how this resonated for you, because that would be really amazing just to see how this is coming up. And again, I have like the full body chills. So I, I feel like you guys have a lot going on this summer that you'll be working with and presented with. Um, but yeah, please like the video, subscribe, share comment all of that stuff helps these messages get to where they need to go and it really supports me a lot as a reader so thank you and if you're wanting to book one-on-one -on -one readings that link is in the description and you can also reach out about mini pre-recorded readings so they're less expensive and you could also just do it on your own time receive it whenever you're ready to receive it okay so i'm sending you guys so much love this is going to be a powerful transformative summer season for you and i will talk with you soon